Three, screw it, we're gonna do it live. Three, two, one. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to xable.com. Josh Riketic here. It's the 31st Annual National Veterans Wheelchair Games, co-presented by the Department of Veterans Affairs and the Paralyzed Veterans of America. It's Power Soccer, sponsored by Xerox and Mylan. Josh Riketic here, alongside me, Andy Green. Andy is the coordinator here for Power Soccer for this year's games. Andy, tell me a little bit about the differences between Able Soccer and Power Soccer. Hey, first of all, thanks for taking the time to cover the event. We really appreciate you guys uh, coming out and taking a look at us today. In terms of, of wheelchair soccer versus, versus able-bodied or outdoor soccer, really some of the biggest differences are that we try and open up the court for play. And so what you'll see the referee do a lot of times is encourage space. And there's actually a law on the books that we refer to as two on one. Uh, where we try and avoid, just like situations here, where we have multiple players from both teams coming in and creating uh, basically a situation where the ball can't move, players can't exhibit any type of creativity, anything like that. And that'll be a change of possession either way, for whether it's the offensive two-on-one or the defensive two-on-one. Absolutely, it'll be an indirect free kick for the opposing team, and it, it, as you pointed out, it, it can be uh, applied either towards uh, the attacking team or the defending team. Uh, just depending on circumstances. So what, what you should hear the referee doing a lot of times is encouraging uh, proactive behavior by calling out three meters, three meters, warning the players ahead of time so that we, we get into a situation where hopefully we can avoid blowing the whistle and interfering with the flow of the match. And I see a couple different chairs here as far as the front end is concerned. I see some that are a metal front end and some are not. Can you explain that to me a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what you're referring to, or we refer to as, as foot guards, and those are the primary oh, instruments that the players will use to, to move the ball around with during the match. What will happen here is that some players who are playing power soccer year-round will have their own equipment, and so they'll bring their own guards in. That's uh, what you should be seeing with the metal guards up front. Some of the uh, some of the uh, players who just come in and play recreationally or don't have their own equipment will use the plastic guards that you see here. Those are provided by the Veterans Games themselves or directly. So. Uh, and Andy's going to be with me all game long. Let's get you some of the starters that are out there today. For the red team, we have one that calls himself Mr. V, a California native. Also, William Bass from Tennessee. William Tinsith, a Texas native. And the keeper for the red team is Ronaldo Soto, also a Texas native. For the green team, we have number 14. It's Charles Walker, a California native. Number 12, who's up here in front of me, Nathan Davenport. Number 10 on the far side of the pitch, Robert Olivor, a California native. And number double zero, Thomas Bundert, a Washington native. That's where the games were two years ago in Spokane, Washington. And we have a foul here. It will go with green possession, two 20-minute halves, uh, much like you would see in outdoor or normal soccer, two halves. Usually it's 45 minutes apiece, but here only 20. Do the games usually get high score? Uh, it depends on the it depends on the on the teams involved. I have seen anywhere from zero zero draws up to uh, games that run you know, six to four, six to five. Uh, and, and you can draw here in power soccer. Absolutely, we are. These are uh, group play preliminary stages, so uh, a winner is not needed here. We will uh, will will determine the top four teams after the final game of, of uh, group play today, which is at. Uh, 8 o'clock, 8.30 tonight. And is it much like uh, normal, any kind of soccer that you see, like a, a World Cup soccer in pool play, three points for a victory, one point for a draw? Yeah, it would be exactly that. And then uh, hopefully we'll have a, a clear-cut winner based on wins and losses and draws and, and one point for the draw. And then if we have to, we can get into tie-breaking scenarios that involve uh, uh, tallying up goals for, goals against, okay. uh, so forth and so on. So very much just like outdoor soccer, any type of soccer that you watch on TV or, or live. Yeah, absolutely. Green making a push here. It is with Oliver, and now the ball is stuck in between Mr. V and Oliver. That one gets loose. It stays inbounds. Oliver has it. He's going to try the baseline there. Is it going to squeeze in? It looks like it's not the goalkeeper for the red team. Soto does a great job, but the back half, it goes with Oliver, and they tally their first one. A great job there from Oliver. Persistence, really. Absolutely. Did a good job of, of not letting loose on the on the ball, even though he started seeing some congestion in the penalty area. Did a good job of following up and, and making sure that he finished that ball across the goal line. Oliver, the California native, has his own front guard, so you expect that he would play year-round. Yeah, absolutely. 
I have seen Oliver in, in other events throughout the country with the USPSA, the Power Soccer Association. Uh, so he is one of these individuals who does play uh, year round. Now, are the teams how they're designated, just like how they were for basketball? At, you know, anyone can sign up for power soccer, and then you know they pick the teams uh, pretty much like a draft, like it was uh, for basketball. We, what we do is we get a preliminary list a few weeks ahead of time, and then we will work to to do some preliminary seating based on our knowledge of the players and taking into into account also the level of of. Uh, of uh, disability that they that they've got, and we also try and just make sure that we've got a balanced team so that we don't inadvertently stack uh, one team with a with a bunch of, of players who have played repeatedly, and then versus a bunch of rookies who haven't played uh, at all uh, prior to this event. So uh, this uh, and th this is the first time that they're all playing together as a group, correct? Uh, yes, yes. Unless they just happen to have played together in years past, right, in previous right. events, or or during the off season somewhere else. Would that give a team like the Green team a little bit of an advantage, really, having a guy like Green on their squad, having that uh, knowledge and really the familiarity with playing the sport year-round? It would, which is why we look to balance out uh, players like him across multiple teams so that, again, we don't have a situation where we've got one team that's just stacked head and shoulders above, uh, above uh, other teams. And you see Green there making another push down the near side of the pitch here towards us. It will go out of bounds. I believe it will stay with Green. And they're going to have an opportunity. we've got a goal kick here, I think. Or what? It looks like Green is retreating, so it, should, it appears it'll be a goal kick. Yeah, it's a goal kick. And that's, it's a much yeah. bigger ball as well than a, than a normal soccer ball. What is the dimensions of the ball? I knew you were going to ask me that, and I, I can't remember <laughs> what the dimensions are. Two times, three the times the size of, of a normal soccer ball? It's big. It's, it's big. <laughs> it is large. It is large. It is. Um, I think that's one that I could kick around. Yeah. I'm not too good with a regular soccer ball, but I think I can get that one. That was one of the first things I noticed. It is very large. It, but it, it moves absolutely. well, too. It's not, it doesn't have too much bounce to it. Either. It does. We, we make sure that it's not uh, overinflated in such a way that, that, uh, that we've got a problem where, where the ball is taken, taken air, as we like to refer to it as, because we like for it to stay on the ground. And I saw it have some give, too, when it got in between two chairs. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, made, it's made out of the same material that, that other soccer balls in the outdoor game are made out of, just larger and We've got a situ We've got uh, times where balls will uh, will come out of the ball out of the bag new, and they'll get a little sticky. And we'll we'll right. apply talcum powder to make sure it still okay. skids and plays nicely. Um, but other than that, it's it's pretty much a it's it's a uh, it's just an oversized soccer ball. Now, something that I noticed last night with uh, wheelchair basketball, there's a lot of contact, really, and that's something that I I don't know if I expected it, but more than I would see in normal basketball, and there's a lot of contact here as well. Do they have special chairs that they use just for wheelchair soccer, or is that their regular chair for the most part? I mean, that's I mean, there's a lot of contact going on, and usually not too much. They let it go a little bit too, which is good. Right. The uh, the chairs that they're in are pretty much their their day to day chairs. Some may bring in specialty chairs for this event. Um, I know that, that the full-time players who are engaged uh, at higher levels of play throughout the year will have specialty chairs right. just for power soccer, but most of these guys, by and large, they are using their own day-to-day -day chairs. And I believe it would be Invacare who does most of the just uh, normal repairs there, or is there a different company that I goes believe with? Invacare is, is set up, uh, has set up, they've been a long-time sponsor of the games, and I think they've got a repair center set up downstairs. Uh, we also have uh, have some people here who are willing, uh, volunteered to set up uh, the guards and do the installation on that, and they'll do repair work on chairs as necessary. And that's all for free too for for the veterans. Yeah, absolutely. I've given Invacare a lot of pop the past two days. I think they're going to be very happy with me. I don't get well, Invacare doesn't pay me, but it's just I know yep. they sponsored last night. Tonight it's Xerox and Mylan sponsoring the Power Soccer all week. It's still 1-0 here, 11.30 left to go here in the first half of play here. It's Power Soccer, Josh Rakedic, Andy Green alongside me here. It's Xable.com, 31st Annual National Veterans Wheelchair Games. All the action here on Xable this week. A no. foul turnover there to the red team. Two on one again. And they haven't had too much success really generating any offense yet. It's really been on the opposite end of the pitch. You talk about time of possession in outdoor soccer a lot, and it seems like Green has a lot of that time of possession at this point. Yeah, and, and again, it's, it's so tough uh, when you get together for the first time and you meet your teammates. At a clinic this morning, we held an introductory clinic at 9 a.m., and then some of these guys didn't show up for that and met their teammates for the first time. Switch it out, 15. Uh, you know, today when they're getting ready. So 
you know, the, the, the idea of, of two-on-one, everybody thinks that they need to go in and get on the end of the ball. And, and uh, I'm sorry. We had some subs coming to the game. Yeah. Uh, we have number one on the, the green team who's making his first appearance today. That is Robert Thomas. Also have number three, Nathaniel Jackson, coming in. And we switched the keeper as well, I believe. New keeper. New keeper for the green team is number 11, Joseph Cruz. Uh, the red team is also making a substitution. That would be number 13, Wayne Moscato. He looks like he's going to be the new keeper for Soto. So a couple she Is there any limit on so Obviously, I think there is a limit because each uh, player has to play a minimum of 10 minutes, correct? Correct. And so we've got volunteers over here who track, uh, who track participation. Other than that, there are no restrictions as long as we just make sure all the competitors get in their, their 10 minutes per game. Um, and then after that, it's up to the teams to, to basically manage themselves in, in that regard. And now does every team have a coach as well? Some teams may, some teams may not, and again, you know, in this environment, a coach is really just somebody who's volunteered to step up and, and help. Uh, they don't necessarily have an attachment to the team per se, although they could. How has this year the turnout been opposed to other years for the, for the games? Uh, it's tremendous. Um, we're, we've got six teams on the books, uh, but quite honestly, the, the teams are staffed with more, more players per team than we would like to see. Uh, we were just simply limited by, by court space and availability here at the games. Right. It's just a logistical issue. Uh, I think that we could have fielded eight teams easily. Uh, would that would have, would have no been a, a very high number for power soccer? That would have been, I want to say, that would have been probably the highest, uh, most number of teams we've had ever. Wow. And I'm hoping, uh, I'm certainly going to try and lobby to make sure that we get additional court space right. in future games to be able to uh, to, to get these guys uh, some additional games. So a big success thus far for Power Soccer without even playing a first game. Absolutely, absolutely. We have we have grown in each year at the games, and I'm, I'm hoping that that growth will uh, will continue. 9:08 left to go here in the first half. Mr. V with it. For the red team, good defense there by Bass, and now it will go with Oliver, who's going to take it up the near side of the pitch. Oliver trying to take it away from Mr. V, but he doesn't let that happen. Mr. V with it. It gets knocked away there from Thomas, and a foul it will stay, I believe, with Green. It will stay with Green. Oliver. Calling out the shots of his team. It's going to be pushed forward by Jackson. V has played some great defense here thus far in the early goings of this game. Thomas knocks that one loose. Thomas still with it, trying to manage through. They're going to call a two-on-one there. And I believe it will stay on the offensive for the green team. We have a sub coming into the game. I believe it will be red with the sub. And the red substitutions coming in is number 11. That's Kenneth Walsh, Minnesota native. And also Manuel Sigwood, number 15, and the California native. You mentioned earlier, uh, as far as picking the teams is uh, from level of disability. What levels of disability uh, are there for the power soccer as far as the classifications are concerned? We follow the, the, the traditional scale. We don't really impose anything different than what's accepted by the and in use by the, by the community at large. The nice thing about our sport is that, uh, is that really the chair is the equalizer. And, and what I mean by that is that I have seen, I have seen games where I've had 12-year-old kids competing against 55-year-old men uh, with varying degrees of disabilities. And because they're functioning within the chair, all they're really limited by is their ability to control and maneuver the chair. Um, and so this sport really is wonderful in that we can take just about anybody, as long as you've got a, a power chair and, and, and can operate it and, and can understand the basics of the game and, and enjoy playing the game, there's a place for you somewhere. And that's really, it's nice compared to something like basketball or even quad rugby like that. This right. one is anybody can play it. It doesn't matter about your athletic ability. That's All you correct. have to do is know how to maneuver in your chair and you can be a really good player here. Absolutely, another two on one called there by the referee. I, what I'm hoping we'll see here is a learning curve. Unfortunately, we've only got situations where, uh, where we've got two games per team, 
But what I'm hoping we'll see is, as we move through the game is that the light will click on, so to speak, with the players and they'll realize, oh, I shouldn't be going into that situation to create the two-on-one. We spent some time talking about it this morning in the clinic, but it's one of those where I could talk about it all, you know, all day long, but until you see it and get in the middle right, of it and experience right. it, you know, you don't really truly understand. So, Green's, Green's going to have an opportunity here. Good defense there by Walsh. And Mr. V trying to push the other way. The time of possession has really still been tilted towards the green team. And they have possession of the ball right now. It's with Thomas. Thomas trying to push that one forward. Cannot. A whistle was blown. I believe that was on the other court. Other That's court, one of the I toughest believe, yeah. things to realize. So there's so many whistles that go on. Right. Usually with basketball, there was three games going on at one time, and that was tough to keep track of. Oliver with it. That one's going to go out of bounds. It will go with red. Six minutes left to go here in the first half. Power spots, excuse me, power soccer sponsored by Xerox and Mylan, Josh Rakedic, Andy Green alongside me here. It's xable.com. Coverage of power soccer at the 31st annual National Veterans Wheelchair Games, co presented by the Department of Veterans Affairs and Paralyzed Veterans of America. Thomas moving forward with a good defense there again by Walsh. As much as Green has had the ball and they keep trying to attack, Red has had some great job on defense thus far. They have. To hold, uh, to hold them to a one nothing game right now, considering the amount of... Well, a tough break there for Red. Yeah. They, could, they might have had the opportunity to move forward there with little, uh, little resistance from Green. Absolutely. And then we've got a situation here where we've got a total equipment breakdown here on the uh, player from the, uh, from the Green team. So Now, it... In outdoor soccer, they have the play on rule where if you get fouled and, and, and the team that got fouled had possession of the ball and they have an opportunity to move ahead and score, the, the play will play on. Uh, is that a situation that we could see here today? I mean, that was an opportunity for Red possibly to move forward, but the whistle was still blown. Absolutely. We, one of the things that, that, that we always preach to referees is it's player safety first and foremost. And so in the situation that we just saw here, we had the guard completely come off the chair. And so that's a situation where we're going to stop play. I don't care if the ball is six must, inches away from the goal. Well, okay. yeah. Uh, but yeah, by and large, the referees, we, we're encouraged to only interfere when necessary. And if it's a situation where it's just a slight equipment malfunction, which quite honestly you'll see frequently throughout these games because these guards are put on temporarily just for this event. Right. And so you're going to see some things come off. You're going to see some things fall apart. And so the referee's got to make a, a quick decision as to whether or not that's something that's, that's major. It's, it's a safety issue for either that player or the opposing player, or if it's something that's a little, little less serious in nature, then we can look at letting it continue and maybe deal with it at a stoppage of the play. Is that a hard plastic on, on the ones that were put on today? Yes. Okay. Yes. It almost looks like uh, what the material would be for what you put mail in at a, at a post office, sort of. It's it, it's same type of thing, but it's it's a bit more firm than that, a bit, okay. more, a bit more sturdy than, than those things. Green still has possession. They're going to have an opportunity here on the inside. Okay. It's Walker. Referee stop play for a, what we refer to as a, a three in the area. That's a situation where we have two defenders in their own penalty area uh, closing in on the attacker and creating basically a, it would be a two-on-one inside the penalty area. Right. And it uh, clogging up play. And so the referee will award an indirect free kick here. Uh, Even though that was in the box, it wouldn't be a correct. penalty kick? It would not be a penalty kick. The, uh, Penalty kick would only be awarded for an offense that would be treated as a direct free kick offense. So okay. ramming, charging, holding, pushing, things of that nature. A uh, technical offense like two on one or impeding would, right. would be uh, treated as an indirect free kick offense. I believe there was another two on one there. Yeah. And we'll have all of our uh, chance from the top of the box here trying to put another one up for the green team. They're already up one nothing, waning minutes here in the first half. And a good opportunity, Oliver. Kicks it forward, nice pass to Thomas. He couldn't get it to go. Great job by the keeper back there for Red. That is Wayne Moscato from Washington. And that was a very good job. He saw the, 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 the danger coming from Thomas cutting through the middle of the box. And he went straight after the ball. Absolutely. Uh, and the referee correctly blew the whistle there if, for a, an infraction committed by the attacker who's coming in hard on the ball. and has a responsibility to make sure he play. everybody's got to play in a safe manner, but uh, the uh, the attacker there came in pretty hard and caused a fair amount of uh, contact there between uh, him and the goalkeeper. So the referee penalized it and we're coming out. And as a matter of fact, the goalkeeper's had to leave now with some equipment damage as a result of that. 
of that contact from the attacker. And I believe it'll be Walsh who has played some pretty darn good defense himself. He's going to be the new keeper. They need an extra, but I don't. I only see. Well, no, there is four They've out there. Four I'm out sorry. There. Right. Now, with that, is as far as the safe play, is that only on the goalkeeper? I know in, in outdoor soccer sometimes they protect the goalkeeper keeper a little bit more. Right. There's a. There's a misconception that goalkeepers receive specialized treatment, and they really they're they're entitled to no additional protection under the laws of the game. But every player, regardless of position, is required to to, to conduct themselves in, in, a, in playing in a safe manner. And if they don't, then the referees expected to step up and take care of that. Oliver, and another free kick. Thomas almost oh. Great job there on the back half by double nice zero, job. Gary Garland. You see that a lot in soccer. The, a player, a regular defender, will sit on that back post and just wait for that opportunity. Thomas was it was seeking for that back post, but Garland, right spot to kick it out. Absolutely, and the referee has just issued a, a yellow card to double zero from the red team. That was Garland. For... Uh, a little, being a little over exuberant, shall we say, in his in his challenge. That on was the some ball. good defense there by Garland. And I believe that'll be a, a corner. And it's with Oliver on the inside. Thomas trying to get there. He can't. And we have another equipment issue. That is number 30 on the red team, I believe. That is Anthony Bryant, who has the equipment issue. So he will have to come off coming into the game will be Penny Gillette, Nebraska native. She plays in the open division. Three divisions, I believe there are, the novice division, the open division, and the masters division. Uh, Oliver, who has the goal here today, is a part of the masters division. Alongside me is Matthew Powell, Arkansas native, trying to figure out the time schedule for everything and trying to find the player schedule. Red is only Red is a man down here at this time. And Powell will say, hey, I'm going to go out there. Powell says, I'm playing. So he'll get out there and be the fourth for Red. Still have had little offense here today. Has the Red team, but they have played some great defense. Under a minute left to go here in the first half. Moving it forward is Garland. Garland gets it to Powell. Powell cutting through the middle. Great job there. Good defense by Oliver. This one's going to come out and out of play. It will stay with Red. Still have an opportunity here. They haven't been a, effective as far as the offensive end of the floor, but defensively they have been very good. Close to halftime. Red looks like they're going to get in just to goal down. They've got their work cut out for them, but I think they've done well this half. Yeah, they have really done well on the defensive end of the floor. Uh, Oliver had that goal pretty early on in the first half. I'd say around that 17-minute mark. Right. And they've done a darn good job to just keep it at one at this part. And that is going to be the half. Josh Rakedic, Andy Green here at halftime. Green is going to go up one to nothing. We're going to take a break. When we come back, second half action here from the Convention Center in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's Power Soccer presented by Xerox and Milan. It's the 31st Annual National Veterans Wheelchair Games presented by the Department of Veterans Affairs and Paralyzed Veterans of America. Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? 